Okay, hello everybody and welcome. I'm Iveri Gaganadze, uh, head of the International Department at Bill State Conservatoire, and in collaboration with Malmo Academy of Music, we present the final session of the International Panel Discussion Series, Freedom in Music Education. It is such a privilege um, to be here and to talk, um, and of course, our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Ukraine. Uh, Um, to come back to the project, uh, I'd like to remind you that we had the sixth session and this is the final one and which was um, and during the sessions we discussed the current challenges of the high music education um, and the international experts, professional musicians and the representatives of high educational institutions were the speakers of the events from more than 10 countries of the world. Discussions were live streamed or and published on the uh, Tbilisi State Conservatory Report CT from February 28th to April 4th. So, uh, and today is the last session, as I said, and uh, the topic of our session is the dichotomy of understanding freedom as a tool or freedom as an aim. And today's speakers are Thomas Winter, He's the head of uh, uh, Korga um, uh, Music School and uh, also the uh, former rector of the Royal Academy of Music in Aarhus, Denmark. I said uh, uh, this title of you because the Georgian audience knew you more uh, from that. And uh, also uh, our speaker is today Julia Mustadalk. She's a pianist professor uh, at Karta University and president of the Ingerson Piano Foundation. Uh, also, I'd like to apologize for the audience that our uh, third speaker, uh, director of the Space Stage Conservatory, Nana Sherkaz, is not able to join us today for the uh, very serious uh, personal reasons. Uh, and she apologized to all of us. Uh, and I'd just like to say that the, all the opinions that will be stated here are the personal opinions of our um, the, um, speakers and also me as a moderator. And it may be different from the official position of the HBC State Conservatoire. Uh, for this final session, we asked our participants to discuss following issues. Uh, we gave them the questions and they could um, uh, present uh, their own opinions about that. The questions were, is, you know, uh, are the universities and the music institutions responsible for raising uh, the generations with a sense of civic responsibility? What approaches were they um, using and what impact that these approaches have? And also, how do they see the freedom in the music education? And also to answer the general question, freedom as a tool or freedom as an aim in the uh, in music and in the high music uh, education. Uh, and I'm very happy that the, for the final sessions, we have very experienced uh, speakers uh, that have a lot of years of experience in the uh, higher education. Um, and our first speaker will be Thomas Winter. Uh, in 2019, he was elected the president of the Association of Danish Music and Culture Schools. And uh, as president, uh, Thomas Winter represents 98 schools nationwide and represents uh, the school's political and strategic interests in relation to the Ministry of Culture and the municipalities. Uh, I will talk more about the uh, biography because you were our speaker for the uh, previous session as well. And so we will be listening to you thoroughly now. Thank you. Thank you, Ivory. Um, yes, um, as you said, I had a, a previous talk in this uh, session or in this series. Um, my first talk was about uh, the East-West divide and whether gaps are deepening or closing. Uh, and it all became rather theoretical. And of course, also due to current affairs, it was focusing a lot on um, some very political issues. Uh, in trying to approach the general topic of freedom, the, channel, the challenges of the liberal democracies, freedom of artistic expression, uh, the roots of and reasons for autocracies and populism, uh, I looked at 
issues from not only a political view, uh, but also philosophically and unfortunately, maybe even slightly uh, from an even slightly pretentious uh, perspective. I'll try this time to be less pre uh, pretentious, more practical, and try to look at answers from a student and university perspective. As you said, Ivory, the questions this time is put forward under the headline, is freedom a tool or an aim in itself? And I'll try to give an answer uh, to the questions that you mentioned. Are universities responsible for educating future generations or to have a sense of civic responsibility? What approaches have the most impact? Uh, how do we see freedom at higher music education institutions? And maybe even give a few practical examples. Those who heard my talk last, uh, or my last talk three weeks ago will not be surprised that my answer to the first and main question is yes. Higher music uh, or higher education as such uh, have uh, a very important challenge in developing a sense of civic responsibility and what we could call artistic citizenship with all students. Uh, I think it's important to understand that for artists and arts institutions, to maintain their relevance in society, the artists of tomorrow must accept that it is simply not enough to master your art. You also must use your art in a broader uh, sense, in a broader social sense. For many musicians, uh, for many musicians, focus uh, has over the last decade or so changed from music for music's sake to music being instrumental for creating social connections between people, facilitating integration and inclusion, uh, musician intensify, making music outside the concert halls and music uh, musical venues. Musicians have become music makers for those people who don't listen to music in the traditional sense. Um, this is a change of paradigm, I think, that cannot be overestimated. And the change in focus will accelerate. You as students, teachers and institutions should be aware of this. Or we as teachers and institutions should be aware of this. You can observe the trend in the way many symphony orchestras, for example, participate in outreach projects and work with children. You see it in the way uh, music schools that I work in become a part of the social and welfare work in local communities. And you see it in us having this discussion as we are speaking or as we are having right now. In order to succeed in living up to future requirements, universities and conservatoires need to employ teachers with more and in many cases different competences than only musical. We need teachers that understand pedagogy beyond music pedagogy, teachers who can not only play and teach music at a very, very high level, but can also use music as a tool for non-musical learning and social processes. This is why you as students and the higher music education institutions have to focus on civic responsibility and artistic citizenship competences you can use to practice responsibility towards society in some form or another will be a future requirement for employment. I think that is actually so it will be a future requirement for employment that you have these competences. It's also important to understand that artistic citizenship, as we talk about as we talk about it here, is not about not making art at the highest possible level. There is absolutely no doubt that music, as you and we perform and create it, have enormous artistic value and brings both joy and insight to a lot of people. In order to do this, we must have the best and uppermost musical education. Artistic citizenship is about taking on additional obligations and acquiring more competences. It's about adding on not throwing away. Higher music uh, education institutions have an enormous responsibility in facilitating, in facilitating this change and in helping transform the mindset of students and teachers. Uh, 
We need new ways to look at pedagogy, new ways to understand our audiences, new ways to look at the concept of the work. For example, in some pedagogical or social processes, the work can be the process in itself and not necessarily the end result. I strongly believe that both social, political and artistic freedom is a prerequisite for the changes I have just described. Freedom for everyone understood as general acceptance of pluralism, diversity, anti-dogmatism, and that everyone has the freedom of expression and the freedom to choose and pursue happiness and their own path in life. So what does this mean? Uh, in artistic and musical education, in, in an artistic and musical educational uh, context. First and foremost, it is the freedom for students to make their own artistic and musical choices. It's about institutional open mindedness and securing the students freedom to interpret works and play and sing and compose in accordance with the students own artistic values and beliefs. It means that the institutions, rather than offering a fixed set of knowledge, a fixed set of aesthetics and an understanding and, and fixed uh, understandings, should focus on developing each individual student's talent and potential. Rather than only focusing on passing on tradition and set formulas, the individual sh student should be in focus and his or her talent should be determining the teaching he or she receives. This does not, of course, mean that we should stop teaching tradition. We can learn a lot from Bach and Beethoven and Brahms and Count Basie and the Beatles and Bruno Mars, just to name a few bees. It's also enormously helpful to know about church modes if you are a jazz improviser or to know Messiaen's second modus if you are a contemporary composer or the Anon Etudes if you are a pianist. But you should always, as students, reflect on all this from your own perspective and not accept that you are taught that you are taught tradition in order to play or compose or sing or understand music in the right way. I'm sure for many of you, this is stating the obvious, but sometimes it is good to remind ourselves of the obvious. And then, of course, entrepreneurship, co-creation, artistic citizenship, focus on gender issues, and all the other things we discuss in relation uh, to higher music educations are all things we must focus on so that we can contribute to forming music life and society in the future. These are all topics that should be included in curricula and should be integrated in all teaching at higher music education institution. So is freedom a tool or an aim in itself? Well, as with so many other questions, the answer is complex, I think, and cannot be answered with a simple this or that, a yes or a no. Freedom is both. In my last talk, I claimed that having a political system based on liberal democracy is a prerequisite for free artistic expression, and at the same time that free artistic expression is a prerequisite for liberal democracies. In the same way, freedom is a prerequisite for free, relevant and modern musical training, but this training is also a prerequisite for educating musicians that can contribute to modern music education, and so the free society and to the free societies that we want. And now it's going to be a very long time before I say prerequisite again. It's a circular argument where one factor is dependent on the other. And if the chain is broken, you have neither free expression nor liberal democracies and neither relevant higher music education institutions nor individual artistic freedom. So I ended on a slightly pretentious note anyway. Do forgive me, but thank you for listening. Thank you very much. <laughs> very interesting. And uh, of course, like we, um, 
we'd like to focus on these topics and um well, i've been now today in, uh, to england and in a scottish uh royal, royal conservatory in glasgow and they were uh, and one guy presenting I, I i told this story already but i think the our audience will be might be interested in that that uh, uh a jazz man made the uh, piano concerto and they had the um, uh, piano concerto arrangement and they had the uh, piano fest and usually this piano fest is very uh modernish and uh, has new approaches and when i saw in the uh program they said oh we had the uh Rachmaninoff piano concerto number two in the program and i was like okay this is interesting but it's like one of the most famous and i was not really expecting on that piano fest and then the uh, title continued arranged for jazz orchestra and then i was like okay this is not what is happening uh and uh and it was pretty interesting the uh, the performer the uh, arranger um came out and he said like uh, this is kind of the mix between jazz gig and the classical gig and when we uh, start the classical um, concert for example at 6 p.m and the jazz starts at 10 uh, p.m and it was it started in the middle uh, at 8 p.m and also like the uh, pianist himself uh, arranged it for like 30 or 35 minutes a piano concerto for one hour and a half long uh, arrangement and there was a saxophone solo and uh, trombone and baritone and uh, trumpet solo and of course the piano and but it was very well done and I think the when you talk that yeah the high quality of the music doesn't go anywhere uh and it, it doesn't mean that when you uh have these new approaches and new challenges and new uh, discoveries first you need the basic professionalism in the uh in within the your instrument and what we're talking now is like how to develop that and how to make uh ourselves interesting and with entrepreneurship and with making accents on uh different issues such as uh, uh, equality, diversity, inclusion, and etc. And uh, and it happened that the, during the uh, th within the three movement, of course, in the classical concerto, especially when you are from the like uh, kind of Russian influenced school educated, I was very surprised. And uh, for for us the, to clap between the uh, movement, it's uh, pr pretty amateur. You are pretty amateur uh, if you do that. And he and of course the first movement in the Rahman concerto is with like a huge uh, emotion, and you really want to clap probably. Uh, and he encouraged the audience to clap, and he was the. Uh, uh, very much engaged and he even stopped up the first moment and talked a bit how he made it, it was pretty different it and audience took it as it was uh, something that was uh yeah new uh but new discovery and nothing that is like oh how can you touch the Rachmaninoff uh piano concerto but I think this came because it was very uh, professionally very high quality uh with high quality and done with the respect of the composer and respect of the music and it came within so i guess all these additional things plus uh, the basic level uh of understanding uh the music uh, then then it comes together and then then it is also the not uh not makes uh resistant the audience that is not used to it that, that is more conservative or traditional so yeah, thank you again very much. Uh, and uh, now, speaker, then, uh, I will uh, present the next speaker for today, Julia Mustonal Dalquist, who is a professor of of music at um, Carlton University, artistic director of Glasgow Den Music Festival and Glasgow Den Winter Piano Academy. And from 2017, she is the artistic director of the. Nordic piano competition, and she's also the president of uh, Ingesund Piano Center. So I took some of the titles that, that you have, so I will not count all of them. So thank you very much for being with us, and we are listening to you now. I, I was I was a little bit cutting, you know, in the in the in the connection. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank, thank you so much uh, for the nice presentation and uh, and also thank you so much for my colleague uh, for a wonderful speech. So it was a true pleasure to hear. 
uh, I am maybe a little bit, I have a little bit different approach because I am not really this like organizer or it, it, it seems like I, I do a lot of organization, but actually this is in such a small musical community. And this is with one aim only is, is to give the best for our students or for my, my students who are here. Uh, we're trying to engage them in different, you know, uh, in different projects and festivals and academy and some special projects uh, only because, yeah, we only we thought about for them having a lot of interesting things to do and not, uh, you know, so all my titles actually, they are not so, not so important like a rector of the conservatory who would understand probably much more some global political issues or connected to the music education in the better way. Uh, I'm a little bit more a uh, practical, practical person if speaking about the freedom uh, for the students or, you know, because uh, this is what we are fighting for every day in our life or this is what I'm uh, having like maybe my main main goal like a piano professor is uh, to teach my students in this way that they will be free in the end and will not need any education so I, I, I'm more um, more kind of from this perspective kind of maybe answering these questions um, you know I just arrived from Dubai uh, I have been there together with my complete piano class. Uh, the project, what we did was um, participating in the World Expo, uh, in the World Expo, where we organized a Nordic Piano Music Week. Uh, project was uh, to bring to the pavilions, uh, to the representatives of Nordic countries and also abroad. We visited Australia and we visited Ukraine and we visited Canada and Latvia uh, with the Nordic uh, program, uh, with the Nordic music. We uh, presented each day uh, one concert uh, per day, uh, but generally uh, this is not important what we did there, but it's important that it was more of a kind of a peace mission. We brought together with us a white grand piano and uh, it was absolutely spectacular. Uh, generally, the atmosphere of this event uh, what only promotes practically a friendship, internationalization, sustainability, and um, where all countries where this not doesn't exist in the expo doesn't exist any boundaries, uh, and uh, it was incredible, um, incredible atmosphere. Actually, we just arrived two days ago. And we went with our white grand piano and played. And this, um, it, actually, this openness to everything and this development, seeking for the development and sharing. So they, I think this is what I got very inspired for and openness of the people who are working it at the expo, or representative from the, all the countries. We worked together with the ambassadors, uh, Nordic ambassadors, and uh, spoke to, to yeah, and the, the the openness was quite spectacular actually. So it was very very inspiring. Um, how to connect it to the civic responsibility? So somehow I believe that a university this is a place where you share the ideas, the openness, where you get. Uh, inspiration and you know um, it's difficult really to um, put the word how can we raise the generations of this civic responsibility how can we do this particularly to impact but I think we can impact them only person and personally because music education is very special we educate um, individuals personally me, we, uh, one, one person at a time. Uh, the contact with the student is uh, qu quite, uh, quite uh, you know, tr tremendous, you know, because you go through a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things in life of the young musician, because to be a young musician is not so easy. There, this is a lot of 
different kind of career path development problems, you know, with a lot of disappointments and a lot of in extremely um, happy moments. And you go through all this together. So um, I don't know the, how can institution take on the responsibility to educate the civic responsibility, but each of the particular individual professor, the, I think this is more up to each particular individual professors. Of course, in our university too, we have these big goals and we, we have the different things what we talk about the globally, but in the end, everything what is happening is happening uh, just just in the in the classroom and this communication and in this what the professor want and will contribute and um, yeah and I think like our children somehow they are not becoming this what we tell them to become they're becoming what we are <laughs> so in, in in the same sense is the same the same with this with, with the students. Uh, this is our responsibility to not raise the generation and civic responsibility, but to be a person who taking this <laughs> and having the sense of responsibility and and just inspiring by being this person, inspiring the closest people who you teach to be this the same, to be the same open, to be the same, yeah, to be to seek for uh, all this, uh, yeah. It, <laughs> freedom in, in, in everything, actually. Uh, so this, this is the approach for me to this impact. I think the, the individual uh, contact and us, actually, <laughs> who we need to raise also <laughs> all the time and not, not yeah, th this, this is very important. And um, yes, how do I see the freedom and high music education? A again, I see this quite practically because when, um, quite young individual is coming to be educated uh, in, anyway in music. So in, I am educating pianists who are playing quite much on stage and uh, yeah. And uh, on stage, whatever will happen, they will be alone there. You will be not with them. You will uh, have to able to give them all necessary tools to be alone on the stage and to be free to speak artistically this, what they wanted to speak. And this is very easy to say, but very difficult to do, because I think this is the highest aim of every artist is to learn to speak on voice, out, on true voice, free voice. And that's why I think the freedom for me in education means something else. It means to raise this um to a, to be able to educate very in a very strong way and give the tradition but leave the freedom for expression and uh, th that is something what i think very essentially important for me because um because in the end yeah they will be alone and talking from the stage with own musical voice to help this yeah this is this is my actually goal like like a pedagogue. And this is what freedom means for me in the education, what, um, what I'm thinking about. This is the freedom of the musical voice of the young artists on stage. And more and more time, I would educate this young person, more and more the voice would grow and be stronger. <laughs> and this is the goal of, and aim of me, of, yeah, that, that's, that's, I think that, that was it, <laughs> if you... Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you very me. much. Uh, yeah, of course, that the practical approach and not only the from the from top down approach, but also the bottom up approach and the individual level is very important. And uh, thank you for your insights. And uh, I remember you also have their very diverse and very international class and uh, uh, at uh, Ingesund and I, I was wondering like to go into that and how, how you manage that to, uh, you said that yeah, to give them some kind of tools and give them some kind of insights that they would be alone and they would be free on stage, but they are also like very different from different continents, from different uh, countries with their own uh, experience. I remember when we were talking on this uh, 
uh, one of the piano seminar sections and with uh, like Western and especially Nordic musicians, their experience is like that. Oh, I like the Chopin the Nocturne and I decided to start the piano, uh, start learning piano. And yeah, at the age of 14, I listened to Prokofiev and then Seven Sonata and I started uh, reading it immediately. And I wanted, I knew that I was become the pianist. But, and then we ha had, uh, Examples like, for, for example, in my case, in some more uh, Eastern uh, educated uh, musicians where they are like from very early childhood, they are determined, they are uh, um, pedagogues, they are um, uh, parents very much involved. So this is very diverse there. And I, I want you to give us some kind, of, uh, some kind of insight and also about the piano seminar course that you have, for example, there that it's not you only have the uh, individual approach, but you have this uh, wider kind of forum or hub for them to talk about the issues that are challenging. I remember you had uh, recording uh, uh, sessions to teach them how to record themselves and, and also to learn the differences between audio recording and video recording, and also to talk about how to learn uh, faster, how to be yeah independent and the sight reading and the memorizing. And, yeah, I, I, I think also like what I remember from my Ingerson experience is that this hub really helped also other than the individual lessons. So uh, yeah, maybe you could answer to that. Yeah, uh, the, the seminar this is a pretty wonderful forum for uh, not only for me to share experience with my students, but also for all my students to share experience with each other. Uh, the seminars are a part of our education uh, is in, the, in the schedule, you know, uh, this is a piano seminar. Mm, so we uh, created this education just a few years ago. Uh, our bachelor education is quite new and try to um, actually create this education and build it in this way that it would support the performing artists. So we try to uh, to put this education in this way that uh, yeah it would it would support the most the, the artists who will who want to be performers to know you know that all the uh, theoretical subjects they are uh, helping the <laughs> performing subjects somehow and so this was um, idea what what came very strongly so that we don't have to we having a performance class every week also where we play for each other and then discuss how who played and you know give comments and quite open you know and um, that's very important to to have a group who supports you know uh, and um, so the seminar this is in principle this is also the same kind of a group lesson but we are not playing, we are talking instead. And then each week we creating a different topics and topics of also comes from students themselves, not only from me. So I am doing the um, schedule for this seminar. Yeah, on, on the requests actually from the students, what should we talk about? What do you think do we need to talk about next time? Because the life of the young artist is very challenging and uh, Sometimes you need support and ideas and sometimes uh, I am aware that one person cannot give it all and and especially because we have exactly we have students from all continents and we are not so big school we are quite small small the piano department I think is like it's less than 20 people in our school and uh, that is a very very little group and um, very well connected of course uh, because uh, we practice practice together in the corridors, and you know every, everyone know each other quite well. And this is very interesting to um, be leading this very extremely intensive and uh, creative uh, group of people. And uh, we can where else uh, we can sh share and hear the ideas from really, really the complete from all around the world. For example, some very small issue like recording or stage fright you know it, it, all people can have such an extremely different <laughs> different experience with that already uh, somebody had uh, much more experience somebody less somebody need help yeah and all the different exactly it was very interesting to talk about the backgrounds and how this affected 
uh, the life of the people because it is it, it tremendously interesting. Uh, some, sometimes I am teaching in the private lessons, but I never got to hear these things, you know, because we're busy working with the music. But in these seminars, I got to hear a lot of background information, what must, might be very useful also for my teaching, how to approach several issues. Uh, for example, about the stage frights or, or, or something like that, you know, because when the people start to share and also help each other in the seminars, it was absolutely wonderful to, to see how many ideas uh, comes out and, um, and how, many, how many thoughts they are. And yeah, and a lot of, of course, the will to help each other and to share the information is absolutely wonderful. And uh, yeah, th this is also one of the tool to, 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 to yeah. Yeah, thank you. And also I think uh, when it comes to uh, like individual approach, that we are like one one to one when we have like performance lessons it is very important to know the uh, background for example i uh, i had like uh, in my childhood like a lot of uh, uh, more competitions and uh, also like kind of policy in this uh, uh, more post soviet countries is that you go the only way that you can do something is like through competitions and uh, we were like uh, every time somebody won a competition they were exempted from the examination so basically the culture it uh, happened that uh, unless you went to the comp uh, competition everybody was uh, exempted all the laureates all the diplomats and that it meant that oh you are a loser if you go to the uh, examination because all the good ones are accepted from the uh, uh, from the examination and that was wrong very wrong and then when I got older and older I had kind of negative feeling uh, towards the competitions I'm like yeah maybe not maybe uh, I, I don't like the ranking you know and everyone is uh, different and I remember Thomas was saying the during the last session that he was here that yeah in the music schools especially we have to remember that we're not raising uh, all, all not all all of them become will become the professional musicians and not all of them will have the uh, their career as a concert uh, musician and we have to have some kind of approaches and also like when we have even this mix of like the the ones who will work with the orchestra so will work with the um uh, with the venues and they will be successful there will be uh, concert musicians uh they also need to have a touch with those who will not be there because they will be their audience they will be uh the ones who will buy the tickets because uh i remember one of my friends saying that yeah in the music school when the teachers were discussing yeah how do we approach our students they were like yeah you have to remember that you are also raising the parents of the next generation pupils because the ones who are usually uh, teaching uh, learning themselves then they uh, tend to uh, have this uh, family connection with the music and the music education so thomas do you have some kind of suggestions maybe how you um, integrate with those who will yeah pursue this profession as uh, this music as their profession and their, their way of life and the ones who will yeah who just want to have an experience well, that's a big, that's a very big question. I think one of, I, I, I really like to comment on some of the things that uh, Julia said. I think it is so important. Uh, you were talking about sort of being role model and, you know, and, and working exemplary. And I think that is so true and so very right that you have to be what you say you are you know even you know as a professor or as a teacher and even as an institution you know you cannot claim as an institution that we take uh, what you know that we take uh, gender equality very seriously if you only have 20 percent female students or teachers you know i mean so you have to be exemplary and one of the ways you can be exemplary is of course on an individual level to be a role model and to actually sh not only tell what you think is right but to show and do what you think is right and i think that goes for the individual teacher and it goes for the uh, institutions um last time i was in in uh, in avika or in ingesund that's about 40 45 years ago maybe uh, um, 
it was at a, a UNM Young Nordic Music uh, Day festival. Uh, and I remember it quite clearly because I got very drunk because I went into the, you still have a sauna, I'm sure, in Avika uh, at, 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 at the music school. And I was sitting there with Magnus uh, Lindström, Magnus Lindberg, uh, Magnus Lindberg and Isa Pekka Salonen. And they kept pouring vodka on the oven, you know, and it was very, very dangerous for everyone. It was terrible. So that's, those are my very fond and warm memories from, uh, from Ingesund. Um, um, I think, you know, what you were asking, Ivory, is, you know, how do you, how can you as music schools, and even I think in the higher music education, be serious about both, or how, how do you, how do you reach out to both those who have, you know, should have a sort of a, who have a broader talent, so to speak, you know, I mean, who, who are not the, 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 the individuals that become the first uh, primarius of whatever, uh, uh, string quartet, or, or the first one to stand on the orange scene in at Boskiele Rock Festival. You know, I mean, the, how do you do that? I think it is very important to understand that it's actually two sides, and that's also what I've been trying to say in these two talks. It's two sides of the same thing. You you have to be very good at performing, at playing, at uh, at um, you know expressing artistically or musically but you also have to be a very very good mu uh, the p p music pedagogue yeah you, you also have to have pedagogical skills you also have to have entrepreneurial skills it's all about being a good musician and it, it's the whole musician has all these skills and will certainly have to have them in the future and then you can always of course say well i mean we differ, differentiate our work, whether we are standing in, you know, the Royal Albert Hall and play whatever, you know, and play this, that or the other, or whether we are out in a music school uh, teaching this, that or the other. Uh, I think London Symphony Orchestra and their, uh, some of their pro outreach programs is a very, very good example of this. The, and they take it equally seriously. You know, I mean, they're, they're very serious about their outreach work. And uh, it's a it's it's part of their orchestral duties actually to go out and do these things, and I think that kind of change in in uh, in the way you think of of pedagogical and society work is is needed, and it should be, and it must be, and it will be a completely integrated and natural part of any musician's of life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and Julia, maybe you want to add something at the final point, and then we can conclude the session. Yeah, I am just very thankful to be with you and and, and uh, hear all the wonderful uh, points uh, from Thomas today, and it was very inspiring actually, uh, and a very inspiring conversation. So I'm thank you for. Of course, thank you, and it was very nice listening to you as well. I mean, I think I think the the the, the thing of being, yeah, uh, exemplary and a role model and and doing what you say you do is 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 a very very good and important point to make as well. Exactly. Thank you both very very much, and I'd like to say to our audience that this was the last session of the international discussion series. Freedom in Music Education, uh, getting all, all almost 20 speakers from 10 different countries and different time zones from America to uh, Georgia and to Sweden to Italy. It wasn't easy, but we did it. And I'm very thankful of the administration of the uh, Spiller Stage Conservatory that uh, we have this platform and uh, so many of you have watched the sessions. Uh, uh, the videos, of course, will, be, uh, will stay there on their uh, uh, Facebook page and hopefully and surely uh, International Department will continue their work, uh, our work and we will also of course start a uh, new project um, uh, probably dur uh, during next semester and uh, of course the freedom in music education is the new way and the new um, uh, steps for the Education conservatory and for the whole region for us to cover the edi issues the equality diversity inclusion uh, sustainability 
uh, digitalization, uh, all these topics that are uh, pretty much new, but are the priorities of the European Union, of the uh, of our region and the, our way. And one of our speakers was saying, yeah, this project, even if uh, the, for the speakers, it is just a 15 minute speech, it's still like one small step uh, to, towards the Europeanization of the institution and the country. And I'm really glad that all of our speakers were with us. And thanks again to Thomas Winter, Julia Muston and Dalquist. Thanks to Sofia Khachapurite, um, uh, who is the communication uh, head of the Space Age Conservatory, who were recording and putting everything on the uh, website. And hopefully see you soon. And I'm really happy to, that our meeting was very uh, positive, even uh, despite the very, very tragic situation generally in the world. And thanks, Thomas, for your jokes and sharing Arvika experience. And you're okay, very, goodbye, very everybody. welcome to edit them out. You know? <laughs> of course. Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye.